Uh, my name is Rasmus Bro. I'm a professor at the University of Copenhagen, where I have been working actually for 22 years, uh, working in a food department. Uh, we work with what is called chemometrics, uh, which is a kind of data analysis specifically focused on chemistry. Uh, so it's probably one of the largest uh, chemometric groups uh, uh, worldwide. My name is Bekshot Hakimov. I come from Uzbekistan. I have a background in chemistry, or more specifically, I'm an analytical chemist. I got my bachelor degree from Uzbekistan. Then I have done my uh, master degree in uh, UK, in University of London from where I got uh, MSc in chemical research and I started the uh, PhD uh, one year later in 2010 at the University of Copenhagen. Uh, winning the prize means a lot uh, because, well, for several reasons. First of all, it's, it's a huge complement to data analysis in general. Data analysis is often overlooked a little bit um, and not appreciated too much. So having this prize going to Data analysis means a lot uh, for the street credit of data analysis. For me personally, of course, it means a lot as well as an acknowledgement of uh, what we've been doing here for uh, about 20 years. And also for the food department, we have a very uh, strong uh, food department here, also internationally. And winning a prize like this is, uh, is uh, very, very uh, encouraging. It means it, the receiving the Niels Foss Talent Prize means a lot to me. First, first of all, it's a uh, confirmation of my research reaching the outside world. And I'm very glad that it has been uh, appreciated in this way. And of course, it also puts me in uh, extra responsibility that maybe I should follow the trend of my research, which I'm already doing. And I wish that I will do that. Data analysis is extremely important, uh, not more important than other parts of a uh, scientific project, for example, but it's the overlooked part. People are happy to spend millions uh, of euros on buying fancy instruments with nice lamps, but they seldom are interested in spending the money to actually take advantage of the data they're generating. And that's a pity uh, if you don't exploit the data you have. So metabolomics is I think it's a perfect approach for applying uh, into food adulteration and food fraud type of uh, research because by doing uh, unbiased or untargeted, we call it, way of analysis, we can actually detect chemical substances which we wouldn't expect to be present in the food. So it's not only about the, 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 the usual, so, so to speak, uh, the bad guys which is present in the food, but we also find some new adulterated, for example, compounds or the frauds. I know exactly what I'm going to uh, use the price for. Um, we have uh, found some very interesting results on what is called chromatography. Uh, where we have shown that we're able to get much more information out of chromatography than people are getting out of that now. Chromatography is used as a standard tool in, actually, I guess, in the majority of chemical analysis worldwide. And what we've seen is that we can get much more information out of that using some new tools we have developed. And I want to make that uh, mature. So I would uh, love to spend the money on maturing this field and it will have a huge impact uh, once uh, we finalize that. I see in coming 10 years, the, we will have most of our focus on the how to process the food waste, how to make use of the food waste. And I truly believe that there will be no food waste in the uh, in, uh, in, in the near future because, uh, as as we all know, that the human population is growing, and we all need food, and we need to find how to make use of from the from food a uh, maximum. So so we we don't waste uh, food materials and food raw products, but we ac actually produce something else which could be used for, for animal feeding or for, I don't know, processing some things. And of course, here again, uh, analysis of this food is important part of this. Uh, so for the food uh, production uh, in the coming years, I can only speak for, for what I uh, know something about. And it's really all about data. 
Nowadays, we all talk about big data and the Internet of Things. These um, concepts are very hyped and they're also too hyped currently, but they will have real implications. Once we have every single entity on the Internet, every little sensor, every little uh, toner in your printer, every little uh, wrench, uh, etc. on the Internet, it's going to have huge implications for how we gather information uh, and there will be a lot of interesting things coming out of that. I love being a scientist because it's, uh, it's encouraging, it's interesting, it's, uh, you work, you live every day not only with, uh, with a routine job, but this is something which actually you wake up in the morning not because you have to, but you want and you, 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 you are in hurry to reach your office, your lab, to see what has happened to the results, that, uh, to the analysis that you started yesterday. And it's always, a new, it's always a new things, it's always a new world, new people, new challenges. That's what I love about it.